CataractCoach.com, IOL exchange with a stuck haptic. Here's how to free the entire IOL without damaging the capsule. So the patient had cataract surgery with a trifocal lens about a month ago, and you can see there's the original incision. I, should, I don't like it because it's avascular. Also, it's on the flat meridian. This patient had a femtosecond laser capsulotomy, but this patient's just not happy having the vision compromise that's inherent in any trifocal eye well. So he's sitting superiorly, because that's his steep axis, and we're gonna make a paracentesis opposite. Notice how far away the paracentesis is. Now we're showing you the whole video today at a sped up twice normal speed, and that's so we can get through the whole case. And here we go, now time for the main incision. I'm gonna make my main incision 2.75 millimeters wide on the steep axis but you can see it's just about 95 degrees. There it is, nice tunnel construction. And yes, I nicked the limbal vessels. That's much better. It'll be much better long-term healing. Now, we're getting a needle, a 27 or 30 gauge needle, and put the viscoelastic, your dispersive viscoelastic on, on it and inject a little bit underneath that rim. There you go. And now we can get that spatula. This is a blunt spatula, cyclodialysis spatula. And I'm pivoting as much as I can, getting 180 degrees a freed up capsule. Now I'll go over the other side and it's still tough to get under there. So we may need to inject more viscoelastic. We're trying, trying to get under there, not quite gonna happen. So try this me method, there we go, there's a gap. And so the key is in the whole case is you have to really separate the anterior capsular leaflet from the posterior capsule where they fuse together. And you can see that whitish haze there on the edge of the capsule, it's already starting to fibrose which is the normal healing response, of course. So now injecting more viscoelastic, watch behind the optic, that's a viscoelastic wave. That wave of viscoelastic has dissected the optic away from that delicate posterior capsule. And let's see, can we pull out one haptic? Uh, let's not do that. Let's just try free it up more. So remember, this lens is the Alcon Panoptics, has a bulbous tip on the end of the haptic. So you really have to do a full dissection with that blunt spatula to free it up. And there you can see that haptic is completely freed up. That looks great. You can bring that up out of the capsule bag. But look at the, the other haptic, the one that's inferior on the screen, which is, of course, the patient superior. So let's try dissect a little more in that quadrant. And is that enough? Nope. Look, it's still attached. There's still adhesions to that bulbous tip. So we'll do it again. Being very delicate here. You don't want to damage the capsule. This capsule's wimpy, right? Think about it. Still not enough. So I just want to keep trying and do as little as possible. I don't want to damage the capsule. So I'll do it again, and I think that may have done it. Let's see. I felt like that may have done it. Can we bring that? There it is. We freed it up now. So now both haptics are freed up from their capsule attachments. We can bring this lens up into the anterior chamber, and we're going to um, explant it. Of course, we're going to do, let me zoom in here for you the twist and out technique. So there's the one haptic outside the eye, grabbing the optic, using the spatula to help fold that over, roll it and bring it out of the eye. There it is, there's your entire lens. That looks great, get that off the field. Let's implant our new lens. This patient wants a monofocal lens. This patient desires the best image quality. And I've not seen any kind of light splitting technology, any kind of trifocal, bifocal, you name it lens that gives the best image quality or better image quality than a monofocal lens. So if you value the highest image quality at the focal point, which is far distance or plain on this eye, you definitely want the monofocal. So we'll put that monofocal new lens going right back in the capsule bag. And that's gonna, we're gonna, again, aiming for Plano, let those haptics open up and that lens will center beautifully. Now, time for the eye probe going inside the eye. Be delicate here. The capsule is really wimpy. Remember, any reoperation like this has more complications, higher risks than the original surgery. And oftentimes, you have to be, you can be surprised by having weakness in certain tissues. Remember, I didn't do the original cataract surgery. I don't know um, the surgeon or what he did during the surgery. All I see is the results after. And so we want to be super cautious here. And you can see there's a nice overlap of the optic by the rexus. We'll do a little light hydration sealing of that incision. And again, under the we protected the corneal endothelium, the entire case with that dispersive viscoelastic. And now a little bit more of the hydration. 
and we'll go in here, make sure there's no retained viscoelastic because the lens is beautifully centered, and we can seal up or hydrate that paracentesis as well. Now let's uh, put some medication in the eye. There's some triamcinolone, helping with some inflammation control, and then we'll also put some preservative-free moxifloxacin as an antibiotic, and that looks great. Beautiful result here. We're not quite done yet. We've got to do a matching limbal relaxing incision. So here it is, opposite the main incision, we just get to correct this patient has about 0.75 diopters of astigmatism with the rule. And the patient had a beautiful surgical procedure. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.